Welcome to another episode of the BLS Podcast Club. I'm David Choi. I'm Joshua Dam. I'm Mark Tran. I'm Joseph Terry. I'm Rujan Terikar. I'm Vivian Hum. I'm Amalia Whetstone. And I'm Zeke Cranstor. And today we're going to be talking about the dress code. So as many of you may know, uh, Ms. Scarrett posted on her Instagram uh, about a few days ago, um, and many students started uh, sending out uh, messages to her uh, talking about how they didn't like the dress code. And although there were a few comments that were uh, constructive criticism, a lot of them were kind of attacking her. And um, yeah, so I think uh, we're going to be talking about uh, do you think the dress code is uh, excessive? Do you think it's all right? Do you think there might be any changes that should take place? And another thing I want to say is that uh, all of Ms. Garrett's actions are done to help the students, even if you don't like them. She's not doing it because she doesn't like us. She's doing it because she wants to help us. And yeah, so. All right, yeah. uh, so quick refresher to those who haven't read their agenda yet. Uh, we have our good man Zeke here with a reading. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the dress code includes uh, that students may dress casually and comfortably for school while wearing clothing that is well suited for the business of education and within the bounds of decency as appropriate for the school. Clothing must cover a student's to torso, midriff, and backside, and have sleeves and shoulder straps of at least three fingers width. Students may have shorts, dresses, or skirts of a length no shorter than the longest fingertip with their arms extended at the side. Clothing, drawings, tattoos, and accessories that display or promote, or promote Hurtful, violent, or bias-based messages are not permitted. These could, incl uh, could include gang insignia or weapons, drugs, alcohol, or tobacco-related information, obscenities, put-downs, stereotypes, sexual innuendos, offensive words, or graphics. Uh, heads and faces must be uncovered indoors except for religious or cultural reasons. Uh, students may wear leggings that are not sheer or see-through. Uh, the waistbands of shorts, pants, or skirts must be worn above the hips. Visible underwear, pajamas, strapless garments, or spaghetti straps are not permitted. And teachers may require professional dress for in-class oral presentations with all the same rules uh, for all students. And a, a violation of the dress code will require a change of clothing. All right. Well, that was the dress code, all right. Uh <coughs> Anybody have any thoughts on that? Um, I think I think most of it is right. Um, like some some of the uh, the rules about like the fingers and the, the three fingers and stuff um, that needs to be like changed a little bit. Like um, it's hitting the right um, like it's pertaining to the right like rule. Um, I think the like so the purpose of the dress code is so that it's not inappropriate and girls uh, show the most skin. Uh, with through their like clothing, so that may be why it's more geared towards women. Yeah, uh, I guess I sort of I I agree with what like Mark was saying, but like I guess I sort of support the school a bit more because like I feel like the problem is is that like um, like girls clothing stores like like uh, Brandy Melville or whatever <laughs> what? whatever like that stuff stuff like that. Uh, like they, like they, most of the stuff that they sell is like super, super, like, like short, like, like booty shorts. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And I feel like, it, like, like that's not like that, like, in a, like, let's say like if school is supposed to like prepare you for like life, like you're not going to be able to wear that to work. Right. It's not appropriate. Yeah. It's not appropriate to wear to work. So like, I don't see like how it's like inappropriate to ask like not to wear stuff that you would get yelled at for wearing at work. Uh, I agree with that, and I'd really, my only qualm with the dress code, again, that doesn't really affect me, is the whole three fingers and then like tip of your, tip of your uh, finger thing for shorts. Uh, really just because there's such a wide range of differences in that, that it's not the greatest way to measure it, because like, I'm super tall, but I have very short arms, so I can pretty much just come in wearing booty shorts. <laughs> And like, I can't get reprimanded for that because they do reach my fingertips. Uh, 
Also, tying into Rajal's point on the three fingers of length, some people have uh, larger fingers. I mean, I know that I have large fingers, so if I were to wear a tank top, per se, which, trust me, I would never do that because I don't look good in tank tops, but if I were to wear a tank top, uh, it might not, it would have to be of a larger size and it might not fit properly because I would need to pertain to the three fingers rule. Zeke three fingers. Wait, no, <laughs> Zeke thick fingers, they call them. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, Thickest guns in the uh, Wild West. Uh, so I actually kind of, um, yeah, I, I kind of do agree with the school's idea. I think it is a bit excessive, though, uh, because um, I think that, especially for uh, girls, um, trying to find um, clothing that is both like not that expensive, is uh, long enough, and looks fashionable, um, it's, it, it's pretty hard to find in most stores. So yeah, I think, uh, I think some changes should be made. And now the female opinion. Well, a lot of clothing stores are more popular ones that girls tend to go to like Forever 21 or like Nordstrom, clothing stores like that. They tend to follow the trends and right now like the current trend would be like crop tops and ripped jeans and stuff like that. And it's really, really hard to find places that don't sell that or if they do like the stuff that they, that they have that's not against a dress code isn't something you would want to wear yeah it's difficult to find like i don't blame the school but also like on like a girl's or a female side it's harder to like find clothing that i could wear to school and it's not like like one person's fault to like not be able to wear clothing that fits dress code just because they have no clothes that are marketed to them and at the same time the dress code sometimes can promote objectivity like it's mostly geared towards women and it kind of like the reason why you can't have two short shorts is because you're it's being like, sexualized like exactly. as a woman which isn't something that should be happening especially in a school and I understand like not showing too much but at some point it's kind of like why should why does this make you uncomfortable? Yeah. Like, you're, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of girls on Miss Garrett's Instagram, like, a lot of people were attacking her and being, like, very, like, irritable, which isn't the right way to go about, like, wanting a change, obviously. And mostly, like, many people aren't upset about the fact that um, we can't, like, w walk around wearing crop tops or just, like, girls want to wear short things. It's just the fact that like a female should be able to wear what she wants without like somebody else commenting on her body. Yeah, I would I guess I sort of agree with I guess I agree with the fact that like the school is in a very tough position because like they it's virtually impossible to find something that doesn't violate the dress the dress code that is still like like fashionable if you're a girl. Um and so I think the school is definitely in a very difficult position as to whether or not to enforce this dress code that is in many ways very outdated. Mm -hmm. It like dates it way does. back to the 70s. It does, and it's not that the dress code favors boys over girls because if a boy were to come in with booty shorts or a crop top, they would still be dress coded. Um, I beg to differ, booty shorts do reach the tip of my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But like at the same point, you're not going to see someone coming in wearing like extremely objectified clothes like at some point we do as women think in our heads like no i'm i'm not gonna wear something like this because you know you also run the risk of the outside world like you might be safe in school but that's not going to guarantee you outside and at some point like these rules like the fingertip thing no one's gonna wear not very many people are gonna wear shorts that are so short that they're extremely inappropriate. But like something shorter than your fingertips is probably going to be something you're gonna find. Yeah, yeah. and it shouldn't be like, um, if, like we're not asking for much, like the girls in the school aren't asking like that. They completely get rid of like the dress code and let girls wear whatever they want, obviously, because that creates problems. 
But we're just asking that like the rules be a bit more lenient with what we wear. Yeah, because I, I think that we can all tell when someone should get dress coded. Like if the the um, like shorts or a shirt are just considerably uh, revealing. But I think that if, if your shorts are uh, a little shorter than your fingers, if it's just a little bit, I think that should be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something like that. And especially in the summer, girls are dress coded a lot because they have to wear things that like have them be cooler or just like not as hot in school and that in itself is difficult enough plus i mean a lot of teachers like i don't think they care as much as the agenda book makes them out to like i don't think they're like well for one thing i just don't think they're gonna go up to you like hey hey bring those shoulders over here let me okay fine like (laughs) I mean, I don't understand how they're supposed to enforce this that strictly. You can't just go up to every student checking their shoulders, just like planting your hand on them. I think it's more meant to be like a general guideline of what it should be. Like maybe a little smaller, maybe a little over, like it wouldn't matter. I guess. I think we as a collective um, general student body believe that we should be able to wear certain things, but we know our like general limits to what we should wear, and we have, I guess, a morals, morals and uh, <laughs> a small bit of self-respect. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention before we uh, wrap it up is that we wouldn't be having this conversation if there were school uniforms. Honestly, the part about school uniforms, I get the whole, you know, everyone wearing the same yeah, thing, don't that. have to worry about that sort of stuff, but it cuts off a student's individuality because a lot of schools that have uniforms also restrict other things, like you can't wear certain things on the uniform, there's a certain length of socks you have to wear, specific shoes that you have to wear, and a student isn't allowed to like have any breathing room to develop as a person. Right, right? and then what about people who are financially, like they can't buy a uniform, and if it's like so strict, like then people won't be able to they, afford they pay it. For the well, uniforms. yeah, and, and it'd be only like a few sets that they'd have to uh, pay for, like, maybe once or twice a sometimes year. Sometimes schools rip us off. Because, oh, all right, sometimes there's like peer pressure and this kid wants to buy this cool shirt that everyone, or like just to look cool or something like that. Everyone wears the same thing. Honestly, anyway. like. My, my old school had regulations on the haircuts. It was pretty bad. See? Yeah. Um, my old school had um, uniforms. We had to wear a teal uh, same. polo yes. with khakis. Yes! It yes. was really cringy. Hey. So we would all walk there like Smurfs in like <laughs> <laughs> Dorchester Park. It's the so, Catholic oh uniform. Oh my gosh, what school did you go to? Yeah. I went to a charter school. Uniform. Yeah, but yeah. no one could really make fun of you since everyone's yeah. wearing the same stuff. True. So that's the same thing that applies. Like if you could wear whatever you want, you might be um, made fun of for wearing certain things. Um, however, in my case, um, they didn't really care what you wore, like on the uniform. They were just like, oh, wear the uniform, wear the khakis. Doesn't matter what you do, nice. and like as long as you have like, of course, like your sh- shoe, like uh, basic shoes and socks. What are your guys' opinions on hats? Uh, Why we're talking about hats? I just don't know what you think about hats. That, uh, Honestly, shouldn't be hats, worn inside. You know, hats is kind of like a general rule. Like when you go inside of a place, you're supposed to take off your hat. It's more yeah. like an ethic. Unless for like religious reasons, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But like if you're going into a nice restaurant, you're going to take off your hat. Or any building, you're going to take off your hat. So that's kind of an unspoken rule. Didn't really need to have to be stated. But then again, there are people here who'd be like, well, it's not in the agenda book, so I don't have to do it. I think the dress code for hats is just like fine the way it is. It, nothing sure. should be changed for it. All right, uh, well, I guess we've pretty much talked about everything we've needed to talk about. So let's set an overview, uh, overview because we all said a bunch of stuff. That's um, true. Uh, so I guess you want to do that, Vivian? Um, I guess so, with the help of my friend Amalia here. Okay. So well, we have one side pro the dress code somewhat. That's saying that it makes sense and it's setting you up for a professional future. And the other side of against the dress code or against or for some changes to the dress code are talking about objectivity and individuality, also, you know, being able to wear what you want without having somebody else judge you. And at the same time, like the practicality of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this has been the BLS podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today or tomorrow or whenever you're listening to this. 
Uh, thank you to Ms. Harari and Ms. Ellis, librarians, and Ms. Long. Uh, without them, none of this would have been possible. And I leave you today with a little loophole in our dress code. Uh, after extensive review, I have learned that you can, in fact, wear a suit of armor minus the helmet, and it won't be dress coded because it's not against the rules. Wait, uh, I just have one thing to say. Uh, if you uh, have any opinions regarding uh, the dress code as well, you, uh, feel free to uh, write down in the comments below, or you can even email us uh, telling us your opinions. And um, also, Miss Garrett, if you're listening to this uh, and you have anything to add or to um, make clear, uh, feel free uh, we can, to come onto the podcast. Uh, we're always welcome yeah. to uh, have you. Thank you, Miss Garrett. And Especially like staying strong and enforcing the dress code and essentially like um, helping kids like learn about how the dress code should be instead of responding to the negativity. All right. Well, yeah, I guess that's it. So this is BLS Podcast signing off. See you guys.